okay. Uh, is this working? No? Hello, hello everyone. My name is Nico Dechev. I'm uh, working with 3D animation and character animation and design, maybe for seven or eight years. And uh, uh, my presentation is the first from a series about uh, 3D modeling and animation. So um, I'll go through the whole process um, from the very beginning, from the simple rules and uh, to, to a final project. So, uh, how we made this picture? What, what we need to do from the very beginning to create such a direct work? Uh, what are the main steps we should take and what's the difference between 3D and 2D. So, first in 2D, we have flat, as everyone knows. We work only on two planes. Um, but when, I'm sorry, it's, it's meant to be in Bulgarian, but hope my English is understandable. When we go to 3D, we now work with uh, with uh, with space with uh, artificial. Um, how to say it? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, but it's, uh, yeah, artificial space, and uh, it's vector graphics, of course, but it's uh, it has volume, and one of the important things in 3D is uh, that we actually. Uh, draw only the other surfaces. If, if we cut this cube in two parts, we will not have two bricks, actually. We will have two hollow objects with empty space. That's important uh, uh, when we go to the materials. So we have uh, control over the points. We can control the points, we can control the, uh, the edges and the whole face. We can move, rotate and scale them and multiply them to make every form we, we imagine. Um, so, we, we use then algorithms who, who make our work easier, who smooth things. So, we still uh, model only the simple form, but the computer is uh, making different effects like smoothing and so on. So this is the control. I think uh, you get the idea. So let's start more detailed stuff. Um, first we need to sketch our project. We need to have uh, clear vision of uh, what uh, we want in the end. So I made this uh, fast uh, sketch of a 3D model and I draw really fast structure of the face uh, having in mind the position of each polygon each of these faces. Um, the most important thing here is uh, to, to keep the, the flow in such a way, so the animation later will be um, more fluid and smooth. So if we want the model to smile at some time in the animation, we have to uh, keep the flow and the polygons that way, so it will bend better. Now we set uh, the front and side views in the viewport, so they are our reference when we start to model. And we start from a single face. That's one of the, maybe the most classic uh, way of modeling, 3D modeling. There's a lot more ways. And uh, 
we start to follow the shape. Uh, okay. Um, it's very important to to actually predict what we want in the end, what kind of model, low poly, high poly, um, and the needs of the project. Because uh, if we make too uh, a lot of polygons or make it too complex, it will be very hard to to animate and to read the model to attach bounds and controls. Um, uh, as you can see, uh, I'm starting working details like making different important parts like the A's, the mouth area, uh, by itself and then uh, connect them. And around the polygons, multiply them. Uh, the way uh, they will move uh, um, the right way. <coughs> then we switch to the side, rearrange arrange the polygons uh, again to follow the shape we work in 3D. And that's uh, pretty much the basic uh, of stuff. Here the air appears and I won't go in depth in the whole process because it's only uh, some kind of introduction to 3D. Uh, there's a lot of material on online and by books, very well done. So finally, polygon by polygon, or part by part, by parts, we get the finished head, for example, here. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, edges uh, through the forehead. That's because uh, um, I, I'm planning to make um, these wrinkles on the head, so I need a lot of polygons so they can paint in the right direction. I predict this before the, the end of the project. And this is the smooth. So, uh, the smooth actually is something um, uh, that the program makes automatically to make our work easier. We still work with the low poly model actually, and that's a really important thing to keep the low poly base of the model so we can make easier changes and uh, animation and so on. And the scene will be way more lighter. Now, the unwarped part, it's very important to uh, make this in the right way. So, uh, this uh, unwarped defines the final quality of the model. We should, this some kind of, we actually peel the face, like, like making, taking skin off and uh, make it to a flat uh, a surface. So, we now, when we draw the texture, uh, actually when we paint the model, we work in 2D. So that's uh, again, um, you need to know uh, very well the 2D uh, software so you can manipulate it, so you can draw the model. That's again a classical way. There's a ways to draw in 3D, but you will see uh, examples of this in the next. Uh, presentations and you see when we start draw at some point of the face the unwrapped one it appears on the model in three dimensional finally we are ready with the texture the main color texture uh, that this is only the color part uh, in 3d uh, we had uh, in the material, we add a lot of layers to simulate the skin, for example. The skin is very detailed uh, thin. Uh, we have light bouncing inside it. That's a surface uh, scatter material. We have uh, bumps, we have refraction, uh, reflections, refractions. Uh, actually, refractions we don't have. And uh, uh, you must draw 
every curve uh, to be really um, accurate, so you get the final result. Okay, that's okay. Finished with the low poly cage, and we uh, in the end finish the whole model. That's uh, not so easy. Like, like here. <coughs> Um, you can do it part, part by part, uh, hand speed and so on, and connect them in the end. Then clotting. Uh, the way uh, I often use uh, the most... Um, okay, my most used technique is uh, to actually uh, cut, uh, cut a part of the mesh, the body mesh, and uh, uh, finish it until it's uh, a clot. Uh, that way, um, you keep the structure of the cloth almost the same like in the model, and you have better uh, bending uh, of the cloth like in animation, simulation, and so on. But uh, of course, uh, there's some a lot of techniques available. Details for the brows and the uh, eyelashes. I use uh, simple splines, which are again uh, smooth. You can see actually how uh, simple they are in the beginning, just a few points. Uh, but uh, this give me a, gives me a lot of control, and I can actually count the exact number of splines. And this is very good technique because uh, I don't use plugins for this. It's uh, splines inside Max. The hair, this is, uh, because I'm working in 3D Max, uh, there's a lot of solutions. Uh, this is the integrated in, uh, actually, it's uh, PS3 Max 9, it's a bit older version, but I like it because it's very stable. And actually, the, the hair is working really well there. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, there's a tool so we can shape the hair along the surface of the head, so we can make uh, every haircut we want to. Uh, next part is the bounce part, or creation of a skeleton. We need uh, some kind of a skeleton to control our finished mesh, so it, it can be animated. Um, it's again the bipeds inside Max, very st the standard uh, one. Uh, so we place the bounce inside the mesh like in a real person. And then we set weight. So we, we tell, for example, which bone, uh, how to affect the nearby ver uh, verts or points of, of the mesh. And this is uh, the most important uh, part and it's one of the hardest parts to adjust uh, every point, so it can bend uh, perfectly during animations. Actually, you make a lot of uh, pauses to test the bone, to adjust uh, the weights. That's uh, only the basics. And finally, you get uh, uh, a finished uh, character that uh, can be moved, positioned, and so on. Then you make controls to uh, some parts. Uh, I'm actually using Morpher. Morpher is uh, some kind of blending between shapes. So you can create uh, different deformations of the mesh without using bones. Um, it's easy editable, I like uh, I use it a lot of my works. Um, actually this view is uh, the Mitru's viewport in uh, newer versions of Max, but that's only for the preview. Uh, as you can see, the, the eyelids uh, move along with the eyeballs, so it's, uh, you need to put a lot of time in there to, to make it work. 
Okay, so let's uh, get back to our image we want to create, the one with the coffee cup. Uh, as you can see now, I can position my finished model with the cloth and everything to the to the poles I want to. The care is uh, static and ready. Uh, now, another uh, technique of modeling, um, kind of objects that have um, center of point and they are symmetrical, like this cup, instead of uh, model every polygon like we did with the, uh, with the, um, with the character, I, I just, uh, just need only to, to draw the, the line of the cup. And then, again, with integrated mod modifiers, I can simply make this turn around and create the shape which is actually two minutes work, saves a lot of time. Then again, smooth it and so on to make it work. Uh, now, the coffee actually is not visible in my image, but I still need to make it because um, I'm using kind of material for the cup, which is uh, uh, simulating porcelain, um, and the light goes through it. And if I didn't make the coffee inside it, the whole um, cup will lock empty because the light will pass through the walls and go all the way. But you will see later. Okay, that's uh, a sofa. Actually, uh, it's not. It's very. It's not visible in the final image, but uh, I just placed. <laughs> Now, the camera, um, one of the things I really like about 3D is that uh, you mix uh, a lot of um, um, a lot of arts, like uh, you have painting, you have uh, photography, you have uh, uh, cinema, you have almost everything uh, mixed to create a project. So here uh, I'm using um, A physical camera, um, so I can define the lens. I can um, crop the image in the way I want. Now the light. There is the photography part. It's uh, actually my setup for this image. We have uh, main light, which is uh, kind of a cold, um, um, warm color. Um, I have a uh, backlight, which is uh, which makes the um, the back edges more defined. I have a field light, which, which is really um, dim. Uh, it's, it's really weak, only to feel the scene. Um, and uh, a background light only for the background, so you can you will see this. This is the setup. So here the result only from the main light. Uh, as you can see, the light goes through the porcelain cube, but only in the edge when we don't have with steel with curve. So it it looks it looks full steel. Uh, no matter the copy itself is not visible. Uh, I turned on the GI. GI is uh, um, is the glow illumination of the scene. Like uh, when the light comes from the um, from the source, it bounces in the scene and goes back. So you you can see here some kind of bounce. But in this image, because I'm uh, simulating a studio lightning. This is not actually a main part because uh, in the studio you have only dark uh, walls and uh, your only sources are the lights and uh, I mean the light bodies and th there is no bounce. It's not like uh, in a, in a daylight scene. But I still uh, turn it uh, on just to check. So the backlight, only the backlight. Uh, you can see the same effect on the 
here it's called the subsurface here when the light goes through the flesh and exits uh, accepting the color inside uh, you have actually different map map for this you have you have to draw which color you want the light to accept from the model so it's uh, it's kind of complicated <laughs> This is the field light, only uh, this big square from the front, but uh, this is only to uh, to make the darker parts a little more visible. And the background uh, light, it's actually a setup like in a photo studio, it's no more different, the only difference is that it's virtual, it's not real. And that's the final render, the four lights combined. Uh, now about uh, the more detailed stuff in 3D. Uh, one of the things uh, a lot of people don't use very often is the ambient occlusion pass, and that's uh, actually the way the light uh, goes from every angle and make shades on closer objects like you see the most dark, darker part is uh, under the car, the tiles and that's uh, actually a really, a really cheap way for me to, to, to help the global illumination solution uh, to bring out uh, small details because this render very fast actually you don't have to wait days and weeks uh, this is my uh, ambient occlusion path for this image. Um, again, it has a really small effects in this scene because, as I, as I said, uh, uh, I'm simulating a studio with uh, dark uh, walls, so uh, not much of the light is bouncing around, but still you can see in the fingers how the ambient occlusion pass is uh, actually shading them. Uh, this is a little over exposed version. In the, in the final render I uh, lower the opacity of this uh, uh, layer. Uh, now the Z uh, depth, this is uh, um, this defines the uh, yeah the depth of the image, uh, how far every polygon is from the camera angle, and uh, why we need this. I need this uh, to make uh, the focus of the image. Again, in a cheap way, it will give uh, um, depth of focus effect without rendering hours. This renders in minutes. So. Uh, when I uh, connect this white, uh, white, black and white images, the white is closer to the camera, the black is uh, far away. When I connect it to the render, I, uh, I know exactly which point uh, <laughs> Okay, you can set the depth of field like this. You can change the depth of field immediately, so um, you can actually do this in seconds in uh, 2D editing software or video editing software, no matter uh, saving you a lot of time, uh, you can uh, set different uh, details in focus to blur more some parts you don't need okay, one thing from the practice uh, uh, when you make images uh, you work a lot of hours on it and uh, your eyes get tired really quickly and you lose uh, the actual feel of design and uh, um, so it's a really good good practice to to uh, swap uh, the image horizontally so you can see it in the the other way I uh, often see a lot of uh, anatomy problems uh, composition problems and so on 
Uh, in that case, I actually choose the other version as better. Now the symmetry. The symmetry uh, okay in short the symmetry the, the symmetry of uh, of a face of human face is something uh, that you don't have in a real person so always uh, try to make things uh, freely don't uh, don't get lost making everything perfect because perfect is not good especially when you work with character design or human design uh, Okay, that's some kind of uh, abrasion effect I uh, actually add to the image. Uh, as you know from photography, aberrations are not a good thing and you, we try to avoid them. But in 3D, we actually add them to the image. Uh, because our, our eyes and uh, we are used to search for, for um, details that are not uh, perfect. And uh, that's something that adds realism to an image. Uh, all kinds of uh, post-production effects like chromatic vibrations, like uh, uh, noise, for example. Um, yes. You see the clear render without uh, the depth of field focus, without uh, the, the vibrations, without anything. It looks really flat and uh, mm. You can see a glow around the edge of the cup and something that uh, adds more realism, like atmosphere in the image. The subsurface, I, I already talked about this. Uh, the way the light goes through the uh, objects, because as I said in the beginning, uh, we are working with, um, with the surface itself, not the inside of the model. So the model inside is actually empty so everything is light and we have to control that light so the things lo look uh, realistic go this is the cup from another angle you can see the uh, tra almost transparent uh, edge of the cup which makes uh, things look uh, more real uh, And okay, uh, that's uh, some kind of um, aims I wrote, but uh, we don't have enough time for everything. So, okay, maybe the most important of this uh, is actually to have uh, higher aims, just to set uh, our goals to a higher level. And uh, that's the only way uh, you never get lost. Uh, uh, it's really hard to explain it in English, but let's. Okay, three simple rules I use. Uh, if you don't go after your uh, aim, you will never reach it. And that's uh, something you really need to have when you work uh, uh, with such uh, time-consuming uh, process like 3D. Um, if you don't make a step forward, you will always be in the same place. Okay, that sounds like cliches, but uh, really, you must find uh, some, some kind of way to be able to go forward because uh, in my experience um, working with such things uh, which uh, takes a lot of your time and sometimes you want to just uh, screw away everything and go another direction. It's very important to have a clear aim what you're doing. And uh, the last one, if you don't ask a question, you will never get an answer. So. It's uh, time for questions, if someone has some. Yes. What 
I, okay, uh, the question is what kind of software I use uh, for the model, the render and everything. So the, the software is uh, 3D Studio Max uh, version 9, actually it's quite older one, but uh, I find out that uh, because I'm working with a lot of uh, clients and companies different and uh, sometimes they don't have the latest software, it's better to be able to have uh, to to offer uh, something competitive, more you can, yeah. Uh, about the about the, the post production uh, here, I used to leave the After Effects, which is not the most right way, but uh, it works for me because it's very intuitive and. Uh, it gives you a lot of opportunity to change things later when you find some kind of uh, mistakes. Thanks. It's the standard uh, subsurface uh, scattering skin material in 3D Max. Again, for the copy skin, skin material, um, I just uh, wanted to test it on something different than skin, and then uh, it worked actually. I mean, I'm really happy with the cup, maybe. Actually, it's uh, post-production. Uh, I made uh, this image uh, for only one day, so I tried particles, actually, but uh, the result was so full, I didn't have time to use film effects or something else that uh, would work. No, it's it mentor ray. Everything is standard here. Mentor ray, uh, GI, uh, FG, um, no plugins. So it's really. Uh, standard. Uh, so the question is uh, about the lightning, uh, what kind of material, material are the white uh, squares behind the light? Because the light actually in Max looks like the big one, this one, with no... And uh, I, I put a self-illumination material, which actually interacts really well with the GI and Final Gatter. And, and actually, the most important is that it, uh, it makes a really nice... Uh, a reflections over the okay uh, the cup the lips uh, these things you see here are actually reflections of these uh, of these uh, squares uh, actually for the cup uh, I had an HDRI card in the environment as an environment map but it's really theme out so you mm, the main uh, reflection and bleed, uh, the glow the the highlights, the highlights actually are, are from these uh, self-illuminated uh, squares, the same size size as the light. So that's it. Any more questions? Uh, uh, let's say six hours for uh, six thousand to four. Uh, a really big image, really quick. Actually, the most uh, time-consuming part was the hair, as you can imagine. Mm. That's why I chose uh, such a closed, um, closed hair on the head because I didn't have time to render something more like. Like this, maybe. This talks ages. This is just. Yeah. <laughs> okay, someone else, because we don't have. We have, we have, we have, we have no.
Okay, how long it take for the whole procedure for a person? Uh, uh, okay, so actually the question is how much time you need to complete the whole project. Uh, don't, don't think that way, just start, it's, it, it can go really fast, like 2-3 months if you are familiar with 3D, it's not, it's not really hard. You, if you set uh, deadlines, you will, um, I mean, if you have predictions, you will limit yourself. But just uh, just start it, you will be amazed how fast if you, you will get there. Okay, thank you for your...